Last time on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Here I've got the interior tub and the stock seats. The NASCAR air cleaner they're calling out for is the complete wrong design. The Cobras also included as standard a competition suspension with staggered rear shocks. Now the model kit here is molded with shocks on the front ends. Here's our Cobra engine after it's all glued together. Put a bit of glue on there and then hold the wheels accurate because they want to flop a little bit. And now, on to the show. The stock interior is looking really wonderful. Just got to add in the seats and the gear shift lever. So what I did in the interior was scrape the sides and the back out so that the seats will have that wonderful plastic to plastic glue contact point, just like that. And you can see that it covers over the scrapes. Now the only thing I did that I didn't need to do was scrape this back piece because the seat doesn't actually touch there. If you notice, it is a little higher up at the back. So I'm going to just have to paint over those with flat black really carefully, just so that uh, you don't see the scraped gray plastic. The other thing I did was paint the chrome in the instrument panels on the dashboard, as well as the little knobs. And I added in some wood grain down below. Now all the white pieces down here will have to be painted with some flat black or semi-gloss black or both. And that is where the vents are and like the radio face. Then this should go into the interior and look quite nice. The only other thing is when I was painting the silver, I noticed that I ended up with some on my finger somehow and I stuck it all into the black. So I am going to have to uh, do a bit of touch up there. I also, <laughs> I don't know what happened. Oh, the, this clothes peg popped apart when I had the paintbrush out. And I accidentally hit the corner right here with the uh, chrome, molotov chrome paint pen and <laughs> left a big blotch. So I'll have to touch all that up with my testers semi-gloss black and then put it together and add in the gear shift lever down below. Here's the stock interior with the front bucket seats glued in. You can see how nice this is starting to look. And uh, that molotov chrome in there is really wonderful. Now I know Pete would put door handles in, and I would too, but right now, I don't know, I'm not feeling the love. <laughs> anyway, overall things are going good, and I also have to add in the gear stick. And there are two gear sticks in this kit. One is uh, smooth going up, and the other has these little tiny T-handles right at the top where the ball is right there and those little t-handles i do believe that's a lockout or something and uh, the ball on the top is supposed to be white now i've just scraped the chrome off this for now and a little off the bottom that's supposed to be flat black because that's your rubber pad there you could also use semi-gloss black but one thing i noticed is if you look at the bottom this is not a perfect rectangle it's actually got a curve into one end so we'll have to file that flat before we paint it just to make sure this is all squared up. Another good part about this is someone was saying this is actually an automatic because it's got the little numbers right beside the uh, gear lever. That could be the case, but there is one nice part about it, if it is, is that the top and the bottom are in perfect alignment with the square right there. So you can scrape around that area, like just right beside that little uh, thing that's supposed to be the automatic numbers or, you know, park, reverse, that sort of thing. But um, yeah, you can just scrape a little rectangle right beside that spot and then you can glue down your gear shift lever. Now in my never-ending quest to turn a silk purse out of a sow's ear, I have actually just finished the stock interior and as you can see it turned out quite nice. Now the dashboard I did tilt it back just a little bit so the steering wheel is sticking up at a slight angle. 
But one thing I think is that maybe these seats are too far back. If they had been glued up a little more so the front was a little in line with the curve in here, it might look a little more realistic. But hey, maybe this is a tall fellow that had to move the seat back or whatever just to get out of the car. I don't know. Use your imagination there. But as you can see, I have painted up the steering wheel with the wood grain going around the edge. And I did notice in some pictures there is a wood insert into the steering wheel on some of the, uh, the different cars. So again, it does end up looking quite nice. And if we just bring the body over here... Let's see, we can get the interior tub in there, line it up. And I have noticed that it is very tight up around here in that area with the dashboard where it meets the front windshield. Now that's going to be another bit of a trick is getting that windshield in. But overall, I think this is looking quite nice. This is a bit loose in here, but I haven't glued it in. But again, overall, I think we're starting to win. Now the next step is to go over and start working on the NASCAR interior, which will be a bit different again because it's got the roll cage and the race seats and all that sort of stuff. So let's do that next. To begin our race car interior build, what I want to do is gather up all the parts that I've already cleaned up and, you know, assembled, like the roll cage here, and I want to tape them down to a piece of cardboard and in this case, I'm going to spray paint these parts. So I will need to secure them to the cardboard so that they don't blow away as soon as I start spray painting. Now I'll need the interior done as well, but uh, these components are gonna be painted a different color from the interior. And I think what I'm gonna to try to do is see if I can get some black or flat black or something and paint all of this because the roll bar would have been added in after and the steering wheel would have some you know, f rubber or something around the wheel itself for the driver to get a better grip on. And then the dashboard itself would be painted like a flat black or something so that it would be anti-glare when you're racing. And if the sun comes into the interior somehow, it won't reflect right into the driver's eyes. Here's those same components taped down to the cardboard and painted with a healthy dose of testers semi-gloss black paint now this time around i spray painted instead of brush painted like i did with the uh, factory stock car and you can see that the spray paint technique is you know more consistent really however it is a bit trickier i have this problem with the nozzles getting blocked up and then sometimes it will siphon up junk from the paint can and make little splatters of uh basically crud that I've got to try to remove somehow off of the uh, model kit parts. So I was kind of lucky that this turned out the way it did, but I find that the semi-gloss is almost gloss black for whatever reason out of uh, trim clad. So again, not too sure on it, but those are the components and uh, that's the way I painted them. For the interior tub and the transmission tunnel cover, as well as the seat, I went with a gloss white and this is reminiscent of back in the NASCAR days when they would strip the interiors out of the car and then they might give a light paint coat to the inside just to uh, get rid of some of the steel look to it or whatever. And that would be with the body color. So again, here we've got the gloss white and this turned out pretty nicely. When I paint the pedals in, you'll be able to see them because the pedals will be a flat black. And then the seat, I can paint the upholstery on it just to make it look a little nicer. Maybe leave the sides white or something like that. But overall, this should look good once I get the dashboard, steering wheel, and roll cage in here in the gloss or semi-gloss black. Here's a mock-up of the NASCAR interior with the semi-gloss black roll cage and dashboard installed, as well as the white seat and the center console. So now you can really start to see just how this is growing here and actually looking quite cool. Just gotta paint the dashboard, add the steering wheel, and paint something in the seat for the driver to rest on comfortably. If you like this show so far, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And now back to the show. With the front grille for the NASCAR version, I was wondering why AMT didn't extend this to hit the headlights and uh, left this gap right here where the curve is. 
But I got this update from Dr. Pepper 76, and he is saying that the mesh grill that doesn't fit properly is actually for the Talladega version, since that front bumper and grill is slightly smaller than the regular Torino Fairlane grill. Thank you, Trevor, for showing this to us. This is extremely useful. Well, you're welcome, Dr. Pepper 76, and thanks for mentioning that. So that's the whole reason why this thing doesn't touch the edges. It's designed for a shorter grill. Next up, we have our mufflers and our exhaust pipes. So what I've done is I've painted the mufflers with aluminum and the exhaust pipes with testers steel. Now I did notice one irritating part, <laughs> yet another issue with the kit, is here we have our exhaust pipes. Now I do believe they bend inward into the transmission tunnel there. Okay, so there it is. And what I noticed is that if these are flat, the exhaust manifold is down just a little lower. It actually needed to come upward. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. See, position this so you can see it. So here we have our exhaust pipes. Okay, can you see that? Right there. These don't match. This actually has to come down a little bit, but of course it wouldn't. So... <laughs> The other issue is it doesn't quite go into the axle back here either to anchor. There is a little bit of a gap there. So my only uh, solution to that would be to add a little biscuit onto the end of the exhaust pipe so that it touches here, or just forget that and try to glue it back here somewhere where my thumb is, and um, yeah, just uh, anchor it back there. In fact, that's probably not a bad idea. Just see where it's going to hit, scrape the paint off there and on the in bottom of the exhaust pipe, and just glue her down. Now here what I'm thinking is maybe, I don't know if I can, mm, I don't know if I can bend this up a little bit, pushing it from here, carefully from there. I don't know, this might be more trouble than it's worth now that it's glued in. Just end up... <laughs> reckon the thing, but I think what I might also try to do is glue this and put it there and let that free sit, you know, overnight or something. Let that glue harden up perfectly so the exhaust pipe would be sticking up a little bit in midair. And then when the glue dries and it's nice and firm, then just push the pipe down to where it's supposed to be because it'd be glued solid in the front to the exhaust manifold and then it would just bend somewhere in here on its own a little bit of pressure and take one of the uh, clamps I don't know yeah and just go in like that and let that dry the next day so that would uh, I mean it's not a perfect solution in fact, that clamp doesn't even touch there. <laughs> anyway, it's not the most perfect solution, but I think it would work. And the other issue is there's no paint right there. So I'm going to have to drop a brush carefully down there and try not to hit that little mounting point with the steel color. So again, little complications here and there. Now, when you're doing the NASCAR version, that's going to be a little bit trickier. Because remember, I suggested cutting it off here and here and then putting the dumps back there. But you still have the pipes coming out. So you just got to be careful as to how they're going to align. And this one is curved right over this way, as you can see, just right in there. So again, I'm going to have to do some trickery in order to get this, you know, aligned as best I can. Well, maybe not so bad, but yeah, what a weird angle. Coming in like this and then doing a 45 degree cross back into the muffler. But, you know, at this stage, we've gone five videos into trying to fix this thing. And I'm starting to get tired as to finding the perfect solution just to put the model together. So it might be a little rough coming uh, from this point onward, guys, but uh, I'll do the best I can just to make this look nice and clean. Actually, you know what? If you just put your finger and thumb there and just 
bend this pipe over a bit. It is soft enough that you can bend it and it should straighten out. Now you can see that it's a little straighter toward the, that end. And then that doesn't, uh, or that makes it not look so, you know, 45 degree jagged coming off there. I mean, it's not perfect, but it worked. So I found the way to actually get the exhaust pipes to hit the back here, but it's a little bit goofy up at the front where the headers are. So what I did is I scraped the paint there and there, because that's where it contacts. And I also scraped the paint, two little dots on the rear axle right there. And I'm going to apply glue here on the dot and on the end of the manifold. And then I scraped right there on the pipe and of course made sure the ends were clear of any paint. Now these will just drop into place right here. And then to get the tight fit where the dot is on that axle, I need to slip the man or the exhaust pipe toward the back. And where the discrepancy sort of is is right there because it's right on the edge and it's only being held at the very smallest area in the front of that little, um, you know, sort of curved chisel end. But I mean, there should be enough contact surface with the glue right in here to hold these exhaust pipes down. And uh, once I get it all glued together, ah. This is going to try to roll this way a little bit. So when it's gluing, I'm going to just have to hold it, you know, so that the mufflers are sitting flat. But basically that'll be it. And then I can do the touch up of the steel up in here and a bit of the uh, semi-gloss black wherever it's missing along there where I scraped. Then I still have to add in the back exhaust tips there and there and the little chrome extensions. But overall, I think this is going to work. You just have to bend these. I had to bend uh, this manifold up a little bit, or I guess down to the ground, and uh, this one over this way just a bit in order for everything to line up as best as I could get it. Here's the exhaust pipes and mufflers after gluing them in position, and you know it's actually not that bad. The only issue is this muffler here is just a little bit tilted up and out. I did try to maneuver it over, but it kind of interfered up here. Maybe you'll have better luck putting it down. Now for the tailpipe extensions, I scraped a little bit of paint just behind the spring. And I also painted, or sorry, scraped a bit of paint right down here on the axle tight to the bottom. And what I think is that the tailpipes would come down and bend and wrap under the axle. So uh, these wouldn't really line up end to end across the top. They'd be more down. And the thing you really need is a good pair of tweezers when you're gluing this. Put a little bit of glue onto each of the scraped off sections. And then maneuver your tailpipe extension down into there. Glue it at the bottom by the axle first and then glue the point up here. It would have been nice if AMT had of, you know, drilled some holes into this. Well, actually, maybe not because when you got the... Uh, you know, the high-performance racing exhaust pipes on there, you wouldn't want holes back here. So I guess they're right in that instant. But basically, you're just going to put a little glue on the end there and glue it in like that. Line it up as square as I could to the side springs. And then those chrome tailpipe extensions would come on the back. But I'm going to leave those to the very end and uh, put the chassis in the body so that I know where the extensions are in relation to that rear bumper. Instead of gluing them on now and then trying to maneuver them around the rear bumper and maybe pulling one of these up and off or something, I don't know. <laughs> We're not at that stage yet, but when we get there, you'll know it. Here's the finished job after some touch-up of the metallic steel paint, as well as some of the satin black. And as you can see, this looks really nice. Actually, it wasn't that difficult to put together. It's just right in here that's the issue. These will just hold on right at the edges, and that's about it. But uh, if you look at it from this side, it all looks nice. 
but turning it over you can see gaps right where the manifolds touch. So that would be a real bad hazard to drive because uh, the passenger compartment would be completely filled up with exhaust smoke and that wouldn't be good. But thankfully this is a model and the nice part is it rolls so the exhaust pipes are not hitting the ground at all. Now one thing I want to try here is just to put the interior bucket on and the body and I'm going to take the hood off the body over here for a minute because I want to see if I can look down and spot the uh, the gaps in those exhaust pipes or if the firewall covers that or how AMT addresses this little issue here. I mean it's not a big deal but still I'm pretty curious. So just got to be careful putting that air cleaner in there and just wiggle the side a little. There we go. Okay so no. no, it looks pretty hidden down there, so that's a good thing. The uh, new owner of the car won't see that the exhaust pipes are filling up the passenger compartment. <laughs> anyway, it's just a joke there. But yeah, overall this looks really good now. And um, I don't know, maybe I'm ready for uh, painting that body up. But i still got to work on the NASCAR one as well while we're at it. But yeah, I'm liking this. It's actually all that effort and the hard work, blood, sweat, and tears. It's actually making this look like a really nice model. The stance looks correct on our 69 Cobra, but what about our NASCAR Torino? I just came back from a road trip from visiting my mom this summer. And while I was there, I was down in the basement. And I was looking through my dad's old paint collection and I came across this. And I thought, ooh, I better get that because... Uh, they're clearing up the house and they want to get rid of old paint and everything. But check this thing out. Ford Synthetic Resin Body Air Drying Enamel Dragoon Red, supplied by Ford Motor Company Limited of London, England. So that's something that Pete might have seen in his lifetime. I don't know. But if I turn it around, contents are one quarter Imperial Pint. And then, of course, it has all the directions off the back. But what is interesting about this is, like I said, it comes from London, England, and I was looking this up online, and it's pretty hard to find any of these still around. But the thing about it is, this is actually paint that they used on the British Cortina, which looks like this. And this is the red that they used, and this is from 1966 and 1967. So I thought I could use it on my Cobra kit, provided that this stuff is still good. But if I take it and shake it, you can hear that it's still liquid inside. So we might just have a, a, a chance there that it is going to work. So before I actually open the can, I'm just going to take my dust blaster here and go along the seal with the straw. And hopefully that removes uh, decades worth of dust. And what I'm gonna do before I actually go and paint the model is I will stir it up and I'm gonna paint it on this scrap piece of plastic. This is an old Ertl logo thing that was sitting on the parts tree. I will paint this first because, I mean, paint sitting around since 1966, well, that's a very long time ago now. So I want to make sure that it's going to dry and it's not going to eat the plastic or anything weird like that. So basically, this will be the test for that. Now, if it does eat the plastic or something, uh, I don't know what to do with this. Maybe I'll just hammer the lid back on and leave it in my collection as a curiosity. But at any rate, should be worth a shot, should be worth trying it. So let's see what happens. So now let's take the lid off of our paint and see what's inside. Ooh. Oh, this is looking good from this angle. Wow. Ooh, it has a nice consistency to it. Just dripping off the screwdriver. Now, I don't know if 
Yeah, a screwdriver can reach the bottom. I don't really feel anything. No, no, wait, I do. Feel a little chunky at the bottom. I've got an Oldsmobile uh, screwdriver in a Ford can here. I hope that's not a criminal offense. Yeah, it's a bit of lumps on the bottom. But I mean, for the vintage of this, th thinking that it's been sitting there since 66, it's not very lumpy at all. So I think we might have a winner. Actually, while I'm here, uh, it's not quite mixed properly, though. I wonder if that's going to make a diff. But I'll just do this. And we'll leave this piece of plastic to dry. Let's see how it goes. Just hope there's no lead in this paint, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Did they use lead in this back then? I don't know if Pete knows. But, uh, well, I'm going to have to risk it for the biscuit. So I'm using a popsicle stick here just to mix up the paint. And so far it's coming out pretty nice now. Now I will have to put the cap back on and give it another shake just to make sure everything atomatizes in here. I think that's the word when uh, the molecules smash together again. The thing that's really weird about this paint is I don't re ever recall anybody in our family having a uh, Ford Cortina. I do believe that my dad was telling me that my uncle had a Mercury at one point in time, but I believe it was a mid-50s because my dad was saying that my uncle uh, took the valves out and never actually numbered where they were supposed to go back in. So when he put the engine back together, they were hammering around inside the cylinder head like the hammers of hell my dad said but again like who had this and why does my dad have it and now i have it but at any rate this stuff came out nice uh still waiting for it to dry it is very um uh what do you call it thin it's very thin liquidy i guess i'm trying to say so i believe i could also put this in the airbrush and i have more than enough of this to do a lot of cars in this color. Maybe even uh, Christine, you know, Chrysler from uh, from the movie Christine, of course. C I could maybe do it in this Dragoon Red. Although it does look a little bit on the brown side. Maybe it's just the lighting in here. But again, should be nice. Here I have the Ford Dragoon Red on that piece of plastic after a good 24 hours of drying. And what I noticed, and I don't know if you can see this, but it's not really a smooth coat. There is a lot of wrinkles, and I think that's because I laid it on pretty thick with the screwdriver instead of a paintbrush. And another thing is, this stuff is not really dry after 24 hours. It's a bit soft in here. Now, I don't know if that's the thickness of the paint. I'd have to do some further uh, experimentation. I could paint this side with a proper brush. But I can really smell the thinners coming out of this. So what I think is, in its lifespan of sitting on the shelf, I think some of the bonders and maybe even the dryers inside, well, definitely the dryers, are not really doing their job anymore like they used to. So this is just really liquid pigment at this stage. So I don't think I'm going to use the Dragoon Red on the model because it will always be soft. I'll always be sticking fingerprints in it. But... I let this dry in the basement, which is really cool in the summer here. So I don't know if that's another effect. So I'll have to play with this paint later on my own time. But for this build, I think I'm going to use AMT's 1103 Red. Because to me, this is really a brown red. And if you look at my stick here, like that's more of the red. It shows the Cobra being on the box. And that's more to Tester's 1103. So I'm going to go with that. So I decided to flip this over and give the paint a second chance. This time around I painted it with a proper paintbrush instead of piling it on with a screwdriver. And it covers really well. This is just the first coat. And what I did on here is I wrote the date, so 7, so July 18th, 2024. And I also left a little bit here, because what I'll do is, when this is drying, just to test to see if it is dry, I'll uh, touch over here instead of here. <laughs> you know, just to keep it all nice and uh, not getting fingerprints in this. So what I've found sort of on the other side is this now seems to be like less smelly and more uh, hard as it would be. 
So I think maybe instead of just these seven hours, this thing might need 48 hours to cure because it's so old. Also, I'm going to take it into the hottest spot in our house. And because it is July, it is very hot and uh, horrible upstairs. So, of course, heat rises. So I'll put it upstairs in the computer room and let it sit. Now, uh, I am on the work schedule at my job. And that means that the next day I have is going to be either three or four days because they do the uh, schedule every Thursday. So I don't know what happens next week. So four days at work. If I don't touch this in four days, hopefully it'll be all nice and set. Here's the Dragoon Red now after four days of drying. And if I touch it, you can see that it is now firmed up and there is no fingerprints in here. Well, I mean, there is from the oil on my fingers, but it's not like shifted the paint and left the impression of the fingerprint right in the paint. So that is a good sign. I can also touch our Ertl sign. So the key to this, well, for me anyway, because none of you have this paint, is to mix it thoroughly so that everything automatizes inside the paint can. And that will bring the dryers and everything back into shape. And then just paint it with a brush. I mean, this almost looks sprayed. You know, see how nice and smooth that is? But paint it with a brush and just leave it alone for like a good week and then use it. But I really, you know, as great as this old paint is, I don't really like the color. <laughs> Not for this car anyway. So I'm going to save this paint for another project. But what I'm thinking of doing is maybe we'll just start a little bit into the NASCAR and I'll show you that. Here we have the decal sheets for both model kits, and as you can see, they are the same in this time period. This is, of course, before the new release with the more improved decal sheet. Now, what I want to do is I want to paint the NASCAR model kit and then apply these decals and take some pictures of that so you can see what it looks like. So basically, this would be sort of the street machine look to the car. But then afterwards, I want to go through my decal box and find some race numbers and race sponsors. And then I'll apply those decals over top of the stripes, like along where the door is, and uh, paint the car to tie into the decal sheet. These could work really well on a bright yellow, maybe a beige body, maybe even white or cream, or even a light gray. But I don't know what color I'm going to use. I printed off a list of all the race cars that were in the Daytona 500 back in 1969. And what I didn't want to do was make my model kit one of the official NASCARs that raced back then. Although you very well could. The only issue is you would have to outsource the proper engine for this. Well, at least the single barrel manifold with that proper air cleaner. So what I have here is Richard Petty in car number 43. These are the Ford Cobras, or actually the Ford Torinos that raced. Donnie Ellison in car number 27. Leroy Yarborough in car number 98. And then if we go down here, you've got David Pearson's in car number 17. And A.J. Foyet in car number 1. As well as John Sears in car number 4. Now I've got the body all prepped up and cleaned and taped to this old pop can. Now the pop can is really good because you can get your hand around it and you can rotate it as you're spraying so that you can get all sides including the top and underneath. Makes for something really easy to do. The other thing I need to do is clamp the hood and get that all ready for paint. Now I did sand the body down with some fine sandpaper but the hood I haven't yet so I will need that. You sand it to give the paint a little bit of a tooth to stick onto, so it won't be trying to stick on a smooth surface, which never really works, and uh, that would prevent it from peeling off. Next week on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Here's the wheels after I painted them with some John Deere green, and these are sitting outside so you can get the full color spectrum of how they're gonna look. Now that the paint on the wheels have dried and I've put them into the tires, I can begin to assemble the chassis and get that ready for our NASCAR. Here's our NASCAR body after the first coat of white paint. And you can see that it does have a bit of orange peel in here. It was a hot day and I had issues with the trim clad spray can because the nozzle jammed and I had to drill the hole out while this thing was half painted. And uh, that's never a good thing. Oh boy, this is really gonna look cool once I get it all together.